Hi everybody, we're continuing with our inventory costing methods using Kimmel Weekend and Case's Fundamentals of Financial and Accounting. Um, now we're looking at chapter number six and today we'll be working on problem 6-8a. Now this particular question uses a perpetual inventory system and of course we've seen from our previous video that the perpetual inventory systems calculation are sort of done on a rolling basis and that's what makes that perpetual inventory so good as in that its information remains up to date at all times. We're going to do this question here that is related to Tempo Limited. So Tempo Limited is a retailer operating in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Tempo uses the perpetual inventory method. All sales and returns from customers result in goods being re returned to inventory. The inventory is not damaged. Assume that there is no credit transactions. All amounts are settled in cash. You are provided with the following information for Tempo Limited for the month of January 2014. And so we've got a series. We begin with our ending inventory uh, for December 31st. We've got a series of purchases, sales, sales returns, purchase returns, etc, etc. For each of the following cost flow assumptions, calculate cost of goods sold, ending inventory and gross profit in the event of LIFO, FIFO and our moving average cost. Now, in this particular case, what we want to do is we want to see here when we calculate our purchases and our cost of goods sold, we'll also be calculating a small column over here for our revenue. Okay, and that's new because we've not had to do that before. Um, so let's start off. You can see up here I've already entered the basic information into our Excel sheet, and we're going to be using that to um, to work ahead. Now, what we want to do is we want to we want to use this information to calculate the necessary output since we're going to start off with FIFO, the first in first out inventory. And in this particular case, we've got the 31st of uh, December, where we have our ending inventory of 150 units with a cost per unit of $19. That means our total cost is going to be the total number of units multiplied by the cost per unit. That's $28.50. So far, we haven't sold anything. Moving on to the 2nd of January, we've got a purchase, a purchase of 100 units at a cost of $21 per unit. And so that'll give us a total cost of 2100. Um, then we've got a sale on the 6th of January. So on the 6th of January, we're going to come over to cost of goods sold. We have sold 150 units at a cost of $40 per unit. That means that our total cost for the cost of goods sold is going to be 40 multiplied by 150. Now, there are two things, sorry, uh, this is at a, at a sale price of $40 per unit. Just one moment, I'm gonna move back one step here. First in, first out, okay? Uh, when we calculate the cost of goods sold, it's based on our cost. So $40 was not our cost, $40 was our sale price. When we calculate this cost of goods sold first and first out indicates that we'll use the inventory that was present with us on hand first. So that'll be $150 at a cost of $19 per unit. That gives us a total cost of $28.50. Um, in our balance, we will have remaining with us, we've sold 150 units, we'll have remaining with us 100 units and those 100 units will be at a cost of 21. So that'll give us a total cost of $2,100. And of course, the revenue that we're able to generate, now here, that $40 is essential. We sold 150 units at a cost of $40. Sorry, my apologies, missed a zero there. All right, so that's a revenue generation capacity of $6,000 from that singular sale. Then on January 9th, we have a sales return. Now that sales return means that we are going to get that asset or that inventory back into our balance. Okay, so we're gonna go into our balance. We're gonna add it back over there. This is not our cost of goods sold. Um, this cost of goods sold will in fact decrease by 10 units. So we'll deduct 10 units from here at a cost of $19, so that will be equal to 190. Okay, so we're deducting 190 from our cost of goods sold, we're decreasing our cost of goods sold by 190. And that means that our balance will be that original 100 units, we're gonna add into it 10 units at a cost of 19. All right, there we go. 
Um, and it also means that our revenue is going to decrease. So what we want to do is we don't want to take 6,000 in revenue. We want to take our, um, if we sold 50 units original, 150 units originally, essentially that amount is going to decrease by 10 units multiplied by a cost of 40. So that's minus 400. Our revenue generation is 6,000 minus 400 so far on a rolling basis, okay? Um, then on the 9th of January, again, we have a purchase and this purchase will add over here for us. And so we've purchased 75 units at a cost of $24 each. That means that we purchased 74, 75 multiplied by 24, inventory worth $1,800. And against this, we didn't sell anything yet, so our balance will increase by um, 75 units at a cost of $24. Now, what's happened is we had a previous balance of $21, 21 units at a cost, uh, sorry, 100 units at a cost of $21, 10 units at a cost of $19. This is our rolling balance. This will further be added over here for us and we are going to incorporate into it the 75 units at a cost of $24 that is $1,800 so this is our rolling balance for the cost as of this particular date um, then following the first uh, the 9th of January we have the 10th of January and on the 10th of January we have a purchase return so our number of unit purchases is going to decrease our purchase returns are for 15 units at a cost of 24 dollars so this is going to decrease by 15 multiplied by 24 that's 360 dollars that means a rolling balance is going to decrease by that particular amount so it that means we'll take everything that we have from before in fact here we go we'll take everything that we have from before it's rolling over but instead of 60 units we've decreased it by 15 so now we'll have 60 units remaining all right and so this is a rolling balance for this particular point in time and then moving forward after the 10th of january we also have a sale on the 10th of january and that sale is for 50 units so we go into our cost of goods sold we sold 50 units at a cost of $45 per unit. That means that our total cost of goods sold is equal to 45 multiplied by 50. That's 2250. That is, sorry, again, just confusing that there. The cost of goods sold will be on the cost of that particular unit. Now we go back into our inventory and we see in our most recent inventory, we want to take out, so our first and first out in our earliest inventory, we want to take out 50 units at that particular cost. So these 50 units will be going out at our earliest cost of $21 per Sorry, 10 units at a cost of 19 and $40 at a cost of, uh, sorry, 40 units at a cost of $20. Because if we see the order of our inventory, the earliest inventory was at $19. So 10 units at a cost of $19 and 40 units at a cost of $21. And so that'll give us 840. That's a total of 50 units. at a cost of $1,030. Okay, now the rolling all over balance is going to be very, very important because when we copy this, we want to ensure that we're getting all of the relevant balances in their right places. Okay, so this 10 units has been sold. Out of these 100 units, we have sold 40 units. That means there's 60 units remaining here. This line will be deleted and this is your current balance. Okay, so this is our current balance in our inventory. Now to calculate our revenue, what we're going to do is we're going to say we sold 50 units at a cost of 45, at a price of selling price of $45 per unit. So that is $22.50. So remember we made 6,000, we got a return of 400 and now we've sold 
worth $22.50 again. Then on the 23rd of January, we have a purchase. So on the 23rd of January, we have a purchase for 100 units. And the 100 units are at a cost of $26 each. That means that the total cost is going to be 26 multiplied by 100, and that's $2,600. That's going to be added into our rolling balance. So our rolling balance currently stands at 21 and 24. Here we go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bring down the balances from the previous amounts, and we're going to add into it the amount that we have just purchased. So this tells us that we currently have 220 units available for sale. And then lastly, on the 30th of January, we were able to sell, just one moment, let's go ahead and insert a few more rows down here because we've taken up a little bit more space than we intended to. Okay, all right, and lastly, on the 30th of January, we were able to sell 160 units we're going to come over into cost of goods sold so we sold 160 units now completing that 160 units is critical okay so first and first out we go from our earliest inventory we take 60 units at a cost of 21 then we take 60 units at a cost again of 21 and uh, sorry uh, at a cost of 24 and then we've completed 120 units there which means we need 40 more units 40 additional units at a cost of 26 dollars per unit remember this is our cost of goods sold all right and then once we do this we've got our cost of goods sold just to cross check over here we want to ensure that we've got the right number of units in our calculation we have a total of 160 units sold so that's perfectly fine and against this we've made a total cost of goods sold for this particular time frame of 37.40 okay now what is the balance the balance is going to be rolling over we sold these 60 units we sold these 60 units so we only have inventory remaining from the 26 dollar inventory and that too we sold 40 units from that so we only have 60 units remaining from that particular inventory so we've got inventory remaining of 1560 and the sale that we made in this particular case so the revenue that we were able to generate was 160 units at a sale price of 50 dollars per unit that's an eight thousand dollar revenue so now um, under the FIFO method, if we were to calculate the revenue, the cost of goods sold and the ending inventory, this is how we will do it. So to calculate the cost of goods sold, we're gonna come over here and we'll say cost of goods sold. We're gonna take the relevant sum at each point in time or after every single um, sales that's 3740 over here, 1030 over there. We had a return a purchase return of 190 over here so we don't have to worry about that sorry sales return of 190 over there so we do have to worry about that okay there we go and then we had a sale of 28.50 so there we go 74.30 is our cost of goods sold and then against this we want to be able to calculate our ending inventory and to calculate our ending inventory we just have to take because there's a rolling balance we just take our final amount over here that's 15.60 that's the only inventory that we have remaining on hand and then to calculate our revenue what we want to do is we want to calculate our sum of all revenues generated which is going to come from here. So $8,000, $2,250, sorry, my apologies, $8,000, $2,250, that one sale return that we had previously, and our $6,000 revenue. So that's $15,850. This is our revenue generated here. Now let's do the exact same method on our LIFO. And so once we've done our FIFO, now let's do, go ahead and do it on our LIFO. <clears throat> so for last in, first out. Okay, so for last in, first out, what we want to do is we want to calculate um, how to, we want to calculate how to do our inventory for this particular 